Subclause 1.2 recommends we turn to Annex G, which is the informative section of the Annex. You can learn more about these classifications by turning to page 78 and looking under G1.2. According to Annex G, Class A is for critical applications. Class A classification is giving to wells that would cause loss of the system, loss of major components, loss of control, unintentional release of critical stores, or inability to release armament stores or endangerment of personnel if they failed. Class B is for semi-critical applications. Class B classifications are given to wells that will reduce overall efficiency of the system or preclude the intended function or use of equipment if they failed. However, unlike Class A wells, failure of Class B wells would not result in the loss of the system or endangerment of personnel. Class C is a non-critical application. Class C classifications are given to wells that would not affect the efficiency of the system or endanger personnel if they failed. These classifications must be included in the engineering drawing. Next is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or ASME. If you remember from the Ford, the D17.1 code was part of ASME Section 9. The two documents listed here deal with piping. ASME B31.1 is used for pressure piping anything above 300 PSI. ASME B31.3 is used for process piping, which involves a pressure vessel. As you can see, these documents are listed in numerical order. These documents are most referenced in Clause 9, Non-Flight Hardware. What you won't find in Clause 3 is slang or improper terminology. Unfortunately, many welding inspectors are not familiar with the proper terminology used in the aerospace industry. In fact, many people in our industry are taught improper terminology, which they sometimes pick up at school or at work. To help you differentiate a proper term from an improper one, let's look at a sample quiz question. What do you call the distance between two plates? Take a few seconds to think of the answer. The answer and proper term for this is root opening. Many people in our industry refer to it as a gap, which is incorrect. Next up is concavity. Now you notice this term and definition is underlined. Underlined text means that something was changed uh, from the previous edition. In the case of concavity, this word wasn't always in clause three. However, someone decided it was important enough to be included here so make sure to pay special attention to it. Concavity is defined as the maximum distance from the face of a concave fillet weld perpendicular to a line joining the weld toes. The major subclauses in Annex A are A1, which focuses on standard joint details for groove wells, A2, which covers groove wells in two and three piece T joints, a3, which covers edge wells and flange joints, and A4, which discusses fillet wells. 4.3.2, groove wells, states that all groove wells shall be full penetration, also known as complete joint penetration, or CJP, unless stated otherwise on the engineering drawing or reference supporting document. For example, if partial joint penetration PJP is required, it must be clarified on the engineering drawing. 5.3.2 covers base metals. Test wells made with one of the base metals listed in Table 5.2 only qualifies the base metal group that metal belongs to. Let's take a look at Table 5.2 on pages 10 through 11. This table covers samples of alloys contained in material groups 1 through 8. You'll see the group designator on the left-hand side of the table, followed by the materials that fall under that particular group. For example, if a welder is qualified to weld A216 cast carbon steel, he would also be qualified to weld all other materials in base metal group 1A. He would not, however, be qualified to weld 
the metal is from the other groups. If a welder is qualified to weld Monel K500, does that automatically qualify him to weld A570 carbon steel? The answer is no. Monel K500 belongs to base metal group 3B. A570 belongs to group 1A. According to 5.3.2.1, being qualified in material in base metal group 3B would only qualify welders in that group and group 3A. Table 7.1 spans from pages 33 to 35. It covers 23 different types of discontinuities. The discontinuities column is located on the left-hand side of the table. These begin with cracks and end with the discoloration of steel. You notice that table 7.1 is further separated according to weld class. Weld class A, B, and C are located on the top of the chart. You also notice that some of the words on this table have a small letter designator next to it. It will refer you to the same letter at the bottom of the screen. For example, next to the discoloration for titanium category, you'll see the letter B. Going to letter B on the bottom of the screen will give you further information. It states, discoloration comes in various shades, tones, and hues. 